All right, so these are uh, frequently asked questions, and uh, these are, I guess, FAQs. FAQs. Yes. FAQs. Well, the things that people ask the most. How do I become an astrophysicist? Cool. That's good. a good question. Yeah, it's very cool. So first you have to love it. Okay, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> because if you want to be something that you don't love, right. that's, a, that's a world of hurt right there. And a lot of people growing up want to be things that their parents wanted them to be, and it doesn't really come from within. Right. So they want to become a doctor, lawyer, but it's not really uh, driven by their own motivation. And they become adults, and they find out that they're not really happy at the end of the day. Right. So you gotta, you got to love it. And then... You, presumably you're in school, you're going back to school, you got to take a lot of math. Right. Because math is the language of, of the universe. universe. Yes. <laughs> yes. So now, wait, let me uh, put an addendum on there personally. How do you develop or discover your love of sciences, uh, particularly physics? Because I think that a lot of kids, uh, you know, myself included, find out very late in life yeah. that they love science. I've, I really didn't come into a love of science until I was probably out of college. Until like last week. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, what time is it? What time is it? But how, do you, how so, do you cultivate and develop that? I was fortunate because my parents, who were both still alive and they're in their 80s, have been married 60 years, when I and my siblings were kids, they took us around, and we grew up in New York City, they took us around to all of the cultural institutions that showed adults doing things that were not your standard professions. Gotcha. We went to the zoo and we saw the zookeepers and we went to the museums and we saw artists and the, the art museums and the Museum of Natural History where you see mammologists and you know birdologists, right. you know, <laughs> ornithologists, <laughs> bugologists. Bugologists. Yeah. <laughs> and so you get to see just all the things you can be when you grow up. And one of those trips, I was nine years old, we went to the Hayden Planetarium. Oh my God! Yes, and I, I did not know this. And I'm pretty sure the universe called me, that I had no say in the matter because after that first visit, I was hooked. And I didn't so much to the point where you now run the Hayden. I do run. You know, those stories <laughs> play well, like in in small towns. You know, but in the big city, uh, you know, uh, the fact that I came back and ran the planetarium that that started that me, right. it doesn't play as big in a big city as it would in a small town. But yes, that's exactly what happened. I'm now director of the same place that inspired me to a career of science in the first place. That's really cool. Class. So here's the thing about uh, math, just to consider this. If you, no one, if, if, you, if you stumble upon a page in Chinese, Right. And you say, I don't understand it because it's not the alpha, not, nothing on there can you read that's if right. you grew up knowing English. But you're not saying to yourself, I'm too stupid to learn it. You right. just say, I haven't spent the time. And if you spend two weeks trying to learn it and you still don't know it, are you saying, this is impossible? No, you know it takes time. It takes years to be fluent in another language. Right. I've seen people turned off by math because they didn't instantly get it in a couple of weeks or right. even a couple of months. That's not right. Give math a chance. <laughs> <laughs> All we are saying is say, Neil deGrasse Tyson, the John Lennon of math. <laughs> Give math a chance. Give math a chance. And once you are fluent in math, then the universe becomes transparent to you. Okay. And then the physics becomes that much more empowering for you to know. Because when you look up at the night sky, you don't say to yourself, I wonder what's up. You, you say, oh, that's a star. And right. It's burning this bright, and right. it's at that distance, and it's turning this fast. It's got these chemicals in it. Right. And all of a sudden, uh, the world around you becomes part of your back, your intellectual backyard. That's very cool. So now, let's... Uh, let's uh